So here's an overview I want you to pay attention to. Basically, this is how a form, a, a form 2106 looks like. So you put your name, you put the uh, occupation in which you incurred expenses, and you put your social, okay? So let's go through part one real quick. So part one, you have uh, you have line one vehicle expense, parking fees in line two, you have travel expense uh, while away from home overnight, line three, and business expenses not included on one through uh, through a three on line four. So do not include meals. I will speak about meals later on, but uh, so this is where you put uh, from one to a four. And on five, you put meals expenses. There, there are some specific instructions around meals. And uh, line six, you have total expenses. Pretty straightforward, okay? And and what you have to do here is that you have to actually specify, again, make sure that you specify things where you have the, prop, the proper uh, documentation to uh, substantiate whatever you claim here. Moving on to the second screenshot here. So step two, you want to enter reimbursement received from your employer from it for expenses not listed in step step one. So everything you put before, if there are any any reimbursement that you received, you have to put them here. So in our case, we actually put uh, on line seven, we put uh, 2,250. And step number three, you need to figure expenses to deduct. So basically here you have to subtract those. That's pretty straightforward. So if you subtract two thousand from fifteen thousand dollars on line eight, you have thirteen thousand dollars. And the same thing is uh, applicable here for for seven fifty, the second the second column. So you subtract two hundred fifty from one thousand dollars. Okay. And uh, line nine, you actually put the, the the same number. So you have thirteen thousand to seven fifty. And uh, line ten, pretty self explanatory. You have to add actually uh, data in uh, those two columns. And in our, in our hypothetical situation here, the total amount that we have here is $13,750. Now, one thing I want to say here is that all expenses that I'm that we are going to deduct for this exercise, you have to actually have the proper pip, you have to keep the proper paper trail to sort of substantiate all those uh, all those expenses, okay? Because God forbid, if the IRS were to uh, audit your Form 2106 and they start asking questions, you want to have the answers they need from you. By the way, boss, welcome back to the show. It's really a pleasure to have you here. Make yourself comfortable. You are going to enjoy today's conversation. I want to dig a little deeper here in uh, in uh, in part two, so you can see on the screen. So part two is all about vehicle expenses. So here you want to really specify every information about the vehicle itself. So we have session A, we have general information. And uh, basically session A, it's all about uh, the vehicle, like the dates, the service, the vehicle was placed in service. You want to put the total miles that the vehicle was driven uh, during 2023 for this year and business miles. So you have a total amount of miles, total number of miles, and you have a specific portion that's allocated to a business specifically. And so that's the, the percentage that was driven for business. So if you look at uh, 10,000 miles and 7,500 miles, this amount to 75%, right? And uh, so the average daily round trip permitting distance, the IRS wants to have a clear some, some kind of a, a kind of idea. And uh, so community miles, including on line 12. And so basically, if you have two vehicles, you put the, you put the second vehicle as well, put data for the second vehicle for, but for our case we only have one vehicle throughout the year and from line 18 you put the right information line 19 put the right information line 20 same thing line 21 okay now evidence must be written it's really important i mean if you want to really beef up your your uh, your case vis-a-vis -vis the irs you just want to have a uh, written evidence do not just say stuff that you can't you can't back up okay now section b is all about the standard mileage so this year the, the standard mileage rate is uh, 65.5 cents. So we're speaking here about, so here you uh, on line 22, you have this amount. If you multiply uh, what's on uh, line 13, this is actually uh, 7,500 miles times 65.5 cents. And uh, section three, actual expenses. So here you have to put everything about gas, vehicle rentals, and uh, everything. So when you add everything on line 29, you actually have uh, $10,500, $500. Next, I want to show you here. So part one, you have employee business expenses and reimbursement. So this is basically, uh, you will see that, that, that the amounts really match. So you have uh, the right amount, 10,500. That's the same amount that you have uh, on uh, 
line one vehicle expense from line 22 10,500 so that's really uh, how things should match by the way boss i want to quickly remind you of today's topic we are having a conversation about the uh, form 2106 Now I have section D, depreciation of vehicles here. So basically on line 30, you put the you, you put the right info. In our case, we had 25,000. Remember, we only have one vehicle. If you had two, you're going to have to actually put uh, the information for the second vehicle. But in our case, for simplicity's sake, our, we are only just uh, sticking to one vehicle. And uh, so uh, line 31, not applicable to us. Line 32 here, you want to... Uh, so when you actually follow the instructions, this amount to uh, this amount here that we got is 18750 and uh, 33 you have to put the depreciation amount. In our case, we put 20% makers, and makers stands for modified account, uh, modified uh, adjusted cost, re cost recovery system. Yes, I got it. And uh, so uh, line, 30, line 34, you have the instructions. Line 35, follow the instructions. Line 37, follow the instructions all the way through a uh, line 38 showing you here another on the screen here we have a vehicle expenses so this is part two and part two here what i want to say here is that when we talk about uh, vehicle expenses you need to understand that you have a you need to provide a clear idea to the hours so they know exactly what's really happening what i want to say here is that it's one of those things where you have to constantly make sure that you are using the right amounts here because when we talk about depreciation expenses we have to make sure that those those that depreciation actually is in sync with, uh, with the kind of uh, expenses that you are claiming okay what i'm trying to say here is that if you say let's say uh, let's say you drove your vehicle during uh, during the year you only drove 1000 miles but you are actually uh, you want to de to depreciate the vehicle up to a a, a very uh, a high amount it doesn't make sense right if you don't drive the vehicle that much why would you want why would you need to depreciate that much so there has to be a, a strong correlation a positive correlation between the, the depreciation amount that you are claiming on, on your taxes and uh the actual usage of the vehicle this is really important and the irs actually uh, test those things in terms of seeing what what is the uh, actual useful value of the vehicle because remember you're using the vehicle for business uh, business uh, use and using the vehicle for business purposes, it has to make sense in terms of the depreciation as well. So let's talk about the approach you need to really pay attention to here. Let's go back to the origin, so to speak. So what is really Form 2106? I've showed you the, the form itself, so you have a clear idea what the form really stands for. But we want to go back to the origins and really sort of dig a little deeper to understand what that form really is all about. So when you think about Form 2106, this is basically an IRS document that is used to itemize and tally ordinary and necessary business expenses that are not reimbursed by your employer. It's very important to understand. It has, it, those expenses must be ordinary and necessary. Those this this duality is kind of quintessential here. So the IRS defines such expenses as follows: an ordinary expense is one that is common and, ex, and ex, accepted in your field of trade, business, or profession. And a necessary expense is one that is helpful and appropriate for your business. So it's one of those things where an expense doesn't have to be required to be considered necessary. This may include a variety of day-to-day -day expenses, including mileage, lodging work related meals transportation and uh, so everything such as cash tips for for valet services are the dedu are deductible from uh, like through form 2106 as long as you qualify so who is really eligible for this form uh, 2106 well the most important qualified qualifying factor is that it, you have to really understand in terms of uh, your your availability so you know if you were or are an armed force reservist a National Guard, a qualifying performance artist, a fee basis federal or state government official, an employee with disability impairment related work expenses. And uh, so why should you file this form? Well, a reimbursement, reimbursement ensure that you're not, you're, that you're compensated for costs that came out of your pocket. You should get reimbursed for qualifying expenses if your employer did not reimburse you or if they didn't completely reimburse you. You can also claim deductions if you use your personal vehicle for work related matters eligible car expenses include car insurance maintenance gas and repairs and other common expenses are education 
licenses and uh, certification cost. You also have tools and supplies necessary to complete the work, and also in some cases, union fees. So this is kind of a, kind of important. And when we talk about uh, other forms, you have to understand armed force reservists, fee basis government officials, and uh, other kind of category, worker worker categories. Uh, they do qualify for twenty one or six. By the way, boss, I want to quickly remind you of today's topic. We are having a conversation about form twenty one or six. So let's talk about how do you file this form really? I mean, you want to, the step one, step one, you want to enter your expenses. So we're speaking about all kinds of expenses, okay? Everything that relates to uh, your, your, uh, to, so, so your business, if you will. And so we're speaking about transportation. We're speaking about meals. We're speaking about accommodation. And uh, again, I, I want to insist on the fact that you got to have a, a proper paper trail. You got to maintain a proper paper trail of all, all expenses that you're claiming, okay? And uh, so, and but but I want to really, I want to insist a little bit on uh, I want to insist on meal expense. I mean to calculate meal expenses, you have two options. You can enter the actual amount of each meal related to business. Plus, you need to provide evidence for each meal, including location, purpose, and specific date. I just want to insist on that because uh, the IRS is really adamant and making sure that meal expenses are pretty uh, enforced. You, you can claim, you can either enter the actual amount or you can claim the standard meal allowance calculated depending on where you travel. So for small locations in the U.S., this is $51 per day, but it may be greater in other cities. And you can actually find rate calculators online to determine your expensable amounts, okay? Now, to calculate entertainment expenses, you must prove the business purpose and the amount of each expense, the date and place of the entertainment, and the business relationship of the person's entertainment. And it's one of those things where, again, you have to make sure that if you keep uh, a proper paper trail, chances are you are going to be good anyway. And uh, so when we talk about, so th those are for entertainment and uh, meal, meals and entertainment. One thing I want to say is that in general is that you must present receipts for all expenses of $75 or more, including lodging expenses, as well as providing the location, the purpose, and the specific date of any travel and travel related meals. And uh, so this applies to expenses they have and have not been reimbursed by their employer. So it's just that the IRS just wants to have a clear idea about what's really happening here in terms of uh, your uh, expenses that you are claiming, if you will, on Form 2106. Step number two, you want to enter, you want to enter the reimbursement received from your employer. So uh, all reimbursement received from your employer or third party for expenses shown in step number one, they were not reported to you in box one of your W-2. So if your employer did not reimburse you for any item, items listed in step one, you can skip this section. And step number three, you want to figure expenses to deduct. It's one of those things where you want to, you need to follow instructions on each line to calculate your exact dedu deductible amount. And uh, while you won't be able to deduct the entire total of your expensable uh, items, it's better than nothing, right? You just want to have something. And uh, one thing I want to say here is that it's one of those things where you got to really see what really works for, for your situation. But uh, there is a possibility to actually uh, file Form 2106 electronically. So it's one of those things where, you know, since IRS Form 2106 can be attached to your tax return, submitting it electronically is, is kind of easy. So the IRS offers numerous ways to e-file your tax return for free online. However, you want Form 2106 to be as accurate as possible to not put yourself at risk of uh, litigation. So it's just recommended to actually contact a tax professional for further assistance. Or even better, what we have seen is that you, if you just uh, go with uh, a regular tax preparation software such as H&R Block or, or Tax Act or TurboTax or, or like, uh, you know, Jason Hewitt, whatever. When you file your form uh, 1040, the, the 2106 is attached uh, automatically. In other words, they'll ask you a series of questions. And when you answer those questions, the uh, software in the background will just uh, prepare data for form 2106 automatically. So you don't have to do anything. So when you file your form 1040 this year, you will also file automatically your form 2106. And But it's just important that whatever data, I mean, filing form, filing, um, your tax forms online doesn't mean that you are basically uh, you are absolved 
of any responsibility in terms of uh, in terms of evidence. You got to have the evidence. You got to keep the evidence. All the receipts that you had during the year, for instance, when you when you were talking, when you were you know having meals, when you're having entertainment, you got to keep those receipts. Should the IRS ask questions in the future, at least you are ready. You are. You never know what will what will really happen. There is a possibility to also file a form 2106, uh, but like manually, you can actually send send it to the IRS. And uh, so, if you're mailing the form 2106 along with your tax return, the address will depend on the state you reside in. And uh, so, you go to the IRS website, and they have a section where this, they they put like uh, where to file addresses for taxpayers and tax professionals. And uh, and this is for form 1040 or form 1040 SR. And or you just call the IRS. I mean, they have a number where they, they can actually. I mean, during tax season, they will answer all questions that, that you have. And it's one of those things where you have a clear idea what exactly where exactly you have to file uh, your your form twenty one hundred six. And uh, if you have incorrectly completed IRS form twenty one hundred six, don't worry. There's there's a possibility to actually amend your form ten forty. Not a problem. Okay. And it's one of it, it's one of those things where you want to contact again. You want to contact the tax services professional or you want to uh, like if you have an EA, an enrolled agent or a, a CPA or, or a tax attorney, depending upon how complex your your tax your taxes are, you can just hire a third party to help you out or you can do it yourself. If you have a pretty straightforward tax situation, you can do it yourself. Not a problem. You don't have to uh, involve a third party. And one thing I, I need to say is that uh, completing your IRS form 2106 may be a pain. But it's not impossible okay remember to take each step line by line double check all, your, all of your totals provide evidence for each and get professional help when needed it's one of those things where it's uh it's better to uh, throughout the year when you actually uh drive you know when you drive for work or when you when you uh participate in dinners uh, with uh with clients or whatever please keep all the receipts it's all about you know the mindset of that of uh, what we call paper trail mindset so in other words you have a clear idea about the expenses that you are going to claim at the end of the year and you actually prepare all year long for those expenses and you actually keep you you tally those expenses you actually have a a folder if you will i mean that's what a lot, a lot of people do you keep a folder of all the expenses that you know you are going to claim at the end of the year so that uh, they just, it's just a lot easier you can you can actually track things electronically like in an in a, in a, in a, in a excel spreadsheet for instance or you can just uh, have it uh, manually. You have a folder that actually uh, incorporates all the expenses that you you intend to claim come year end. So totally possible. It's, it's all about tax planning. It's all it's all about tax preparation. So you do things beforehand so that come year end you are ready to go, and uh, this is not a problem at all. Thank you so much for your attention. I really appreciate it. In today's conversation, I was just talking to you about the form twenty one hundred six. I gave you the overview. The, the approach and now the uh, recap. Thank you so much. God bless you. I'll see you next time. Until then, remember, stay marvelous.